can be refreshed. First of all, it's a refreshment from the Word of God because the Word of God is power. Once the Word of God comes, we are refreshed. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah said, The Word I found, I did it, the Word, and the Word become a rejoicing to my soul. We are refreshed by the Word of God. We are renewed. We are made alive with the Word of God. The Spirit of God is there to, to revitalize us, to lift us up, to renew us. We are refreshed by the power of the Spirit of God. Just as the apostles, they were refreshed by the power of anointing and by the power of the Spirit of God on the Pentecost day. When they are refreshed, the apostles that were very, very scared of the Sanhedrin, very, very scared of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they are the one, Apostle Peter is the one that is bold to say to the Jews, you that crucified Christ, him, Jesus, have Christ God raised from the dead. That is the power of refreshment. They were refreshed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is a faithful God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. That is nothing God cannot do for us as far as we come to him. We are refreshed by a new song. He has put a new song in our mouth. We know that when a king saw the evil demon coming to him, David would play the music, new song. And then that evil demon will run away. And the Bible says, and King Saul will be refreshed. He was refreshed by the power of the new song that God has put in the mouth of David. And that's what David said. He has put a new song in my mouth to refresh, to refresh everyone, to refresh himself and to refresh himself and to refresh the whole nation. So the new song refreshes us. Whenever a new song breaks out, that is a refreshment that's come to us. God refreshes us through the water and the blood. 
we know on the cross, after everything, after all is said and done, the soldier pierced through Christ. And the Bible says that the water rushed out. The water and the blood rushed out. The water and the blood rushed out and refreshed the whole wonderful nation. And that is Jesus Christ saying on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That refreshing water. The Bible says, let him that is thirsty, let him come and drink freely. Let him that is hungry, let him come and eat freely. And Jesus Christ says, I am the water of life. Jesus Christ says, I, myself, I am the water of life. Let everyone that is thirsty, let him come to me. And I will give him that wonderful water to drink. Our God is a faithful God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we are refreshed with the water and with the blood. And today, we are going to see another form of refreshment. We are going to go into a little bit deep on the refreshment of the communion. Amen. The refreshment of the communion. The Holy Communion refreshes us. Each time we bring out the Holy Communion, we are refreshed. Each time we eat the Holy Communion, we are refreshed. And then we see the two disciples of Christ that was walking along the road and Jesus Christ met them. And when Jesus Christ met them, the Bible said they did not recognize, they did not recognize Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was asking them stories and they are telling stories of what has happened. How they have hoped that Jesus Christ will be the one that will save the nation. How they have hoped that Jesus Christ will be the Savior and now they crucified him. And again, they said, we heard that he has been raised from the dead. So they are confused. Where is him? Where has he gone? How can we know him? How can we see him? Then the Bible says, Jesus Christ was asking them a question, was going with them, asking them a question. At the time come, Jesus Christ said to them, okay, friends, I want to leave right now. And they said to him, no, no, no. They beat him to say, stay, stay, it's too late. It's too late. And Jesus Christ said, okay, if I have to stay, then we'll have to break bread. Amen. Can we read Luke chapter 24, please? Let us just take from verse 30 to 35. Luke chapter 24, 30 to 35, please. 24, 30 to 35, please. Yes, please. When he was at table with them. And when he was at table with them, this is the time Jesus went, went to leave them. And they said to him, don't go. Don't go. Stay with us. Just like Abraham told the angels that come to, to him to complain about Sodom and Gomorrah. What they are doing that is going to go and destroy them. They want to go and see what's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said to them, Stay, my Lord, so that I can break some bread for you. Abraham compelled them to stay. The angels, the two angels. And Abraham breaks some bread and gives them some food. And they are refreshed. The angels of God were refreshed. And they marched to Sodom and Gomorrah to go and see a lot. And when they go there, what they see with their eyes is, is, destru is destruction. And that is why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. So now, the same thing. These two servants, these two disciples, they were walking, walking on the street. Jesus Christ met them. And when Jesus Christ met them, Jesus Christ asked them, what are you people discussing? And they told Jesus Christ all about the story about himself. And Jesus Christ said, okay, but now it's time for me to leave you guys. And they said, do not, please, sir. It's too late. It's too dangerous for you to go. Stay with us. Tarry with us. And Jesus said, okay, I'm going to tarry with you. But you're going to eat bread. You're going to eat bread. Can somebody, can you read there for me, sister? When he was at the table with them. And when he was at the table with them. He took the bread and blessed and broke it. And the Bible gave says, it to them. he took the bread, broke it, broke it, and he gave to them. 
And what did he say? And their eyes were open. And their eyes were open. And so immediately, and, and they recognized him. Yes? Yeah. And their eyes were open. open. And they recognized him. And what did they say? And he vanished from their side. And he vanished from their side. They said to each other. And they said to each other. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to while he talked to us on the road? Did not our eyes burn within us while he talked to us on the road? While he opened to us the scriptures. While we, when he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they rose that same hours and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together. And they found the eleven and those that were with them gathered together. Saying. Saying. The Lord has risen indeed. The Lord has risen indeed. So their eyes was open now. They were refreshed. They were made anew. They were revived. So their eyes was open. So they went to the eleven. Because you know. They used to, they, they, they should, there should be twelve. But Judas killed himself. So he then went to 11 and said to them, He's risen indeed. So they were refreshed. Their eyes were open. And they take the message now to the 11. Go ahead. And has appeared to Simon. And has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road. And they told what has happened on the road. And how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. And how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. How Jesus Christ was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So once the bread was broken, their eyes was open. So they were known. So they know Jesus Christ through the breaking of the bread. So God, Jesus refreshed their memory, refreshed their understanding, refreshed their faith, Refresh everything in them. And they say, wow, this is the Messiah. Did not our heart burn within us when he was talking to us on the street? We only know when he break the bread and give to us. So breaking of the bread, Holy Communion, is that powerful tool to refresh us. Every Sunday, every time we break the bread, Every time we take Holy Communion, it is there to refresh us. It is there to open our eyes. It is there to make us to know Christ. It is there for, for us to know Jesus Christ, who is the author of life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our God is a faithful God. Okay, let us read John chapter 6, 53 to 55, please. This is what Jesus God said to the disciples, to the Pharisees, and to the Pharisees and to his disciples. He said to them, Look, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. Can you please? So Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, Truly, 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 I say to you, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh, of the Son of Man. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And drink his blood. And drink his blood. You have no life in you. You have no life in you. Until you eat the flesh. Mm. Until you drink the blood. You have no life. There's no refreshment. You are, de you are done. Jesus said, look, every one of you. Both you, the Pharisees, mm. the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin. Every one of you, the apostles, unless you eat the bread, unless you drink the blood, there is no life. You are not refreshed. You are, you are in darkness. The only thing that refreshes us, the Holy Communion, the bread and the wine, that refreshes us. Our God is a faithful God. Mm. Jesus Christ is Lord. And then the disciples take it on board. The disciples take on this refreshment on board. Go into wherever they are, wherever they are going. Anywhere they go, they break bread. Anywhere they go, they break bread. They refresh the people. They refresh the eyes of the people. They refresh the mind of the people. They refresh the spirit of the people. They make the people understand 
who Jesus Christ is. Just as in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 from verse 1 to 11, please. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 from verse 1 to 11. The Bible says, upon every first day of the week. Verse 1. Uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, 1 to 11. After, after the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples. Yes. And after en encouraging them, he said, mm. farewell and departed from <coughs> Macedonia. Yes. When he had gone to those regions and when he has gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement and has given them much encouragement he came to greece he came to greece there he spent three months there he spent three months and when a plot was made against him by the jews and when a plot was made against him by the jews as he was about to set sail for syria as he was about to set sail, set sail for syria he decided to return to macedonia he decided to return to macedonia Sokta, the Berean son of Phyrus, and the Berean son of Phyrus accompanied him. Accompanied him, and of and and of the Thessalonians, and they are of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and the Secundus mm -hmm. and the Gaius of the mm -hmm. and Timothy and the Asians, and the Timothy and the Asians, Titicus and the um, Trophimus, and Trophimus. Go ahead. These went on ahead and were waiting for us at Troas. They went before Apostle Paul and were waiting for Apostle Paul at Troas. But he sailed away from Philippi. But he sailed away from Philippi. After the days of unleavened bread. After the days of an unleavened bread. Go ahead. And in five days. And in five days. We came to them at Troas. Where we he came stayed. to them at Troas after the unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. After they've eaten the after unleavened the bread. The after the feast of the unleavened bread, they were refreshed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. After the unleavened bread, and that was done every first day. From the week. Where do you stop? Verse what? Six. Verse six. Keep on reading, please. On the first day of the week. On the first day of the week. When we are gathered together. When we are gathered together. To break bread. To break bread. Paul talked with them. Paul talked with them. Intending to depart on the next day. Intending to depart on the next day. And he prolonged his speech. And he prolonged his speech. <laughs> till midnight. Till midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room. And there are many lamps in the upper room. Where where we were gathered. Where we were gathered. And the young man named Eticus. And the young man named Eutychus. Sitting at the window. Sitting at the window. Remember, it is by the breaking of this bread that give Apostle Paul the inspiration mm -hmm. and give everyone in the upper room, everyone to be awake mm -hmm. because they have breaking bread and their eyes were open and they were refreshed and they were renewed. Even when you, when you go out and then you come back and you are very, very tired, you are very, very hungry. What do you do? You eat food. You break bread. You eat food. So Apostle Paul did the same thing. The Bible says the apostles, they do the same thing every first day. Every first day of the, of the week. They, please go down and continue to read. Eutychus sitting at the windows. And Eutychus sitting on the windows. Sank into a deep sleep. He sank into a deep sleep. As Paul talks still longer. As Paul talks still longer. And being overcome by sleep. And being overcome by sleep. He fell down from the third story. He fell down from the third story. We should be building our church to third story anyway. And I was, think that should be what we're going to be doing the next time. And was taken up dead. He was taken up dead. But Paul went down. And Paul went down with that power of the breaking of the bread. Bent over him, bent over him, and taking him in his hand said, and taking him on his hand said, 
Do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. For his life is in him. For his life is in him. He said, Do not be alarmed. For his life is in him. Go ahead. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten. You see, and when Paul has gone up and broken the bread and eaten, what happened? He conversed with them a long while until he, they break. He, conver he continued. His, he was refreshed. Paul went back up, break the bread and eat. And then he stayed till daybreak because Paul was refreshed through the breaking of the bread. He was refreshed. He was no longer tired. His spirit was refreshed. His body was refreshed. His soul was refreshed. So he was there the whole night till the morning because of the power of the bread, because of the power of the communion, which they take every first day of the week. That's why we Christians, we take our communion every first day of the week. We, we have our service every first day of the week. Our God is a faithful God. So you can see the power of the communion. You can see the power of the communion. To revive, to revitalize, to renew, to refresh us. And to make us to be afresh. I tell you now. If we take Holy, Holy Communion this very night, every one of us here, our eyes will be open until morning because there is power in the Holy Communion. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. Can we finally read um, um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 27, please? Acts of the Apostles chapter 27. This is when Apostle Paul and other criminals and other prisoners we are taken to going to Rome. Which was? And on the way, okay, as of the Apostle chapter 27, um, it should be from 27 to 44, but let us read from verse 33 to 36, please. 33 to 36. Our God is faithful. As day was about to dawn, as day was about to dawn, they were in the ship right now. Paul urged them all to take some food, saying, Paul urged them, every one of them said, refresh yourself, <clears throat> take some food, take some food. And he was saying to them, Today is the 14th day that you have continued in suspense and without food. You see, that today is the 14th day, and it, this is even a good thing for every one of us to know that you can fast for 14 days. You fast for 14 days. You're not going to die. You fast for 14 days, you will not die. <laughs> Amen. You fast for 14 days, you will not die. You're going to be strong. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So fast for 14 days. And when you are closing your fasting, you, you eat. You take the bread and wine. Let's go ahead, please. Having taken nothing. And they have not taken nothing for 14 days. Therefore, I urge you to take some food. Apostle Paul says, I urge every one of you to take some food. For it will give you strength. For it will give you strength. For not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. He says that none of you will perish. That none of you, not, no one here will perish when you take that bread when you take that communion you will not perish go ahead and when he said uh, these things and when he said these things he took bread he took bread and giving thanks to god and he gave thanks to god in the presence of all he broke it in the presence of all then he broke it and began to eat and he began to eat Go ahead, read more. Then they all were encouraged. Then they, they were all were encouraged. And ate some food themselves. And they ate some food themselves. Now, remember, Apostle Paul break their fast of two weeks mm -hmm. with the breaking of bread. Immediately, the breaking of bread was offered to them. The Bible said they are all revived. They are all refreshed. They are all made anew. And they said, wow. 
our eyes are open. Our mind is settled. We know we're not going to die. We know we're going to survive. So they were encouraged. And they said, okay, let us go and eat more food. And then they went and they take more food. And they eat more food. Because of the breaking of the bread. Amen. So whenever the bread is broken, whenever we have our Holy Communion, it revitalizes us. It revives us. It makes us anew. Holy Communion is there to give you strength. Mm. Look at the Holy Communion. Give Apostle Paul strength to speak till morning. Holy Communion is there to give the disciples strength. Mm. When Jesus Christ appeared to them, He opened their eyes. And they said, wow, did not our heart burn within us when He was talking to us? It is the Holy Communion that brings that revival, that brings that very wonderful light in their heart. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Communion is there to bring the light in our heart, to refresh us, and to bless us. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we, we are refreshed by Holy Communion. And Jesus Christ says, if you do not eat the Holy Communion, if you do not drink, if you do not eat, you will not have any life in you. So you must eat, you must drink, in order to have life. If you don't eat, if you don't drink, you will not have life. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So the Holy Communion amen. is there to revive you. The Holy Communion is there to re revitalize you. The Holy Communion is there to make you anew. The Holy Communion is there to give you strength. And that is why we Christians, we take Holy Communion almost every week, every time, every moment, with any moment we take Holy Communion, it revives us, it refreshes us, it makes us anew, it gives us the wisdom, it gives us understanding, it makes us to know who Jesus Christ is, it makes us to know where we are, the where we are headed to. It, 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 Holy Communion is everything for us. Without Holy Communion, there is no revival. There is no revival without Holy Communion. So you need Holy, you need revival, you need Holy Communion. You need to be strong, you need Holy Communion. You need to abide in the ship, you need Holy Communion. You need to be you, you need to be strengthened, you need Holy Communion. So Holy Communion is there to refresh and refresh and renew and revitalize us. And I pray that every one of us will make ourselves ready all the time so that we can break the bread and drink the wine in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And somebody shout amen. amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this message. Father, I pray that every one of us today that have received this message and those that are going to view this message, Father, we receive the power of God. We receive the refreshment. We receive the strength that they needed in the name of Jesus. But let that strength come. Let that refreshment come. Let that revival come through this holy communion of God. But I want to thank you because you are faithful. But you are just blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen.